Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this video. This is episode number two of 143 Collector's Corner. Now, what we do in this series is take a model car out of my collection and we kind of review it. We put it under the eye and look at it very closely. Uh, but before we do that, we start by looking at the race car that the model is based on. So today we're gonna to start by looking at a legend in the motorsport world, the Porsche 934. The Porsche 934 was modeled on the road going 930. Actually, it's almost the other way around. Porsche already had the 934 in mind when the 930 was in the manufacturing process. These cars were prepared to compete in the FIA's Group 4 class, and the homologation rules of this class stated that 400 road-going versions of the race car would need to be manufactured in a two-year period. So the idea is you can't just build a supercar and send it into race, you've got to have a road going version of that car available and you got to build 400 within a two year period to show that you're serious about it. Those homologation rules also stated that changes between the road and the racetrack versions of these cars had to be kept to a minimum and it focused primarily on safety such as roll cages and fuel cells. The idea behind the system was to keep racing competitive and for the most part it worked, it was effective. So with these limits in place, what did Porsche do? Well, when they introduced the 930 back in 1975, it was built with components far stronger and better than it would need for your regular Sunday drive, for example. But by doing this, it allowed Porsche to remain within the strict modification rules of Group 4, but still have a very strong race car. And this is how the 934 came to be. Now just pause for a moment and imagine that. In today's world, can you imagine a car company manufacturing a car stronger than it needs to be simply so that the racetrack version can be dominant on the racetrack. Days like that don't exist anymore. They're gone. They're long gone. But back in 1975, it was exactly what was going on. So now, with this turbocharged engine and the stronger than usual parts, the 934 continued the sort of dominance that was synonymous with Porsche. It won the 1976 European GT Championship with Dutch driver Tion Hezemans at the wheel. I probably butchered that pronunciation. As well as claiming the American Can-Am Championship in the same year under the hands of George Fulmer. And success continued into the late 70s even as Porsche were introducing the 935. Now as a closing thought, what I did find interesting was the search for information about the race car that our model is based on. That is the number 61 934 of Brumos Racing that ran the 1977 Daytona 24 hours. One might assume, given that it's got model status, that this car perhaps achieved victory or maybe got a really high position at the end of the race. But after some research, it was revealed that number 61 only finished 5th in class, 10th overall, and 91 laps behind the leader. Now let's look at the model itself. This model is manufactured by Universal Hobbies. As a side note, a look at their website reveals they seemingly focus almost entirely on farming models now, which is kind of interesting, but that is beside the point. The first quality that stands out to me about this model is the size of the display case. It is larger than any other model I own, save one, which is also a Universal Hobbies creation. It's almost square in size. Now, I will admit, the slight perfectionist in me, the part that wants everything to match up exactly, wishes all my scale cars came in boxes that were the same size, with the same angle and the same display slope, all of that exactly the same. I know some might say it sounds a bit weird to say that, but I just like things to look universal. So this one doesn't quite fit with the others in my collection. However, I do like the small mirror in the back corner and I like the Eagles race badge on the other side. It does look really, really nice. Looking at the model itself, this car feels heavy with solid build quality. The tires are soft and rubbery and the attention to detail on the exterior is beautiful. 
from the spokes of the wheel rims to the decals, antennae, bolts and handles across the car. I love the flared wheel rims. This 934 looks like an angry bulldog that's about to strike. Now interior detail is almost non-existent other than the black plastic molded to form a seat in the steering wheel. It is a bit of a pity given the amount of effort put into the exterior of this car. At the same time, it is a closed cabin, so it's not very easy to see anything inside anyway. Still, perhaps a little bit more attention to detail would have really pushed the quality of this model right up there. At the moment, it's a great model. I think it could have been an excellent model. I have to admit I have a soft spot for Porsches, particularly ones modelled heavily on the 911. It's a car that I would love to own myself one day, and so when I look at a car like this one, it's more than just a model for me. It's a dream that I aspire to, to one day drive and perhaps own a Porsche of my own. It is for this reason I am so happy to have this car in my collection. I regularly admire it when I pass the display cabinet and I suspect I will continue to do so for many years to come. And that concludes episode 2 of 143 Collector's Corner. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like, maybe subscribing to the channel so you can see when new videos are uploaded. In our third episode, we will be looking at a legend from Formula 1 history. Not, not too old, it's recent, but a legend nonetheless. And I hope I'll see you there.